This episode of Techzilla is brought to you by Netflix. Our friend Darren over at Hack5 recently attended ShmooCon out in Washington, D.C., and he's here to give us a lowdown on this hacker convention. Welcome to the show once again, Darren. Hey, Veronica, what's up? Not much, how are you? So what is what is ShmooCon? Okay, so for those uh, that haven't been before, it is the biggest hacker con on the East Coast. What? We love it. It was like our first hacker con back when we were on the East Coast, mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it's just a great place. They cap it at like 1,600 people, and every year they sell it within seconds. I think this year it was something like 30 seconds for the online oh sales, gosh. so like, go. And, and where, did the, where does the name come from? I think, well, the Shmoo Group are a group of hackers formerly from um, Alaska, and it has something to do with moose. Moose. So Interesting. Yeah. I thought it was like a cartoon character thing. I have no idea. That's what I got mm. from them the first time I interviewed the founders, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So what kind of awesome stuff goes down at ShmooCon? Well, you know, it's this is a great place where like hackers and feds get to come together and give talks and not arrest each other and everybody's good. It's in harmony. Yes. We're all living together yes. like hackers, cats and dogs. Hackers, security professionals, basically the same people, but one has a paycheck and the other one, <laughs> they can make their own right. money their own nefarious way. But you mm. know, it's, it's a good scene. And uh, if you haven't been to any hacker con, you have to go because it'll like just expand your mind. What was your takeaway from the convention this year? Well, I saw three really awesome things. There was a, so much I didn't see, but, uh, but the three that really floored me, uh, first of all, was uh, some of the stuff that tactical networks were showing off. I had the pleasure of interviewing Craig uh, Hefner, who is the author of this new piece of software called Reaver. His coat is brown. <laughs> I was going to ask. Yeah. Okay. Got a little Firefly reference in there. Yeah, nice. yeah. Actually, some of the companion tools, one of them is called Wash. And, like, anyway, um, it's, this is a really fascinating piece of software because it has been years since there's been an advancement in cracking WPS keys. I mean, uh, so, so WPS, that's when you have to sync the devices with the button? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what I mean is, like, um, you know, in, in terms of like cracking wireless networks, 802.11, pick a letter, um, you know, we all know WEP is cheese, I mean, Swiss cheese, like that, that stuff, 30 seconds, whatever. Uh, WPA, a lot more difficult. Uh, in the past, the tools have been like using these things called rainbow tables where you would sp like get supercomputers to spend weeks crunching this huge database so you could try to attack one network and you'd only be successful if their key was in the dictionary. Gotcha. This is really cool because it retrieves WPA keys, but it doesn't have to crack WPA. It takes advantage of that WPS, that button on your on your little router. It's called Wi-Fi Protected Setup, and it's actually part of the um, Wi-Fi consortium kind of ratified it. And it's basically there for convenience, one of those things that we love at Hack5, convenience, right? Well, um, turns out when you press that button, and then you press the button, it's like syncing your Wiimote, mm -hmm. right? And so you press those buttons, and they exchange the keys, and everything's happy. Well, um, Craig looked into it. He explained to me that he was, oh, I was just reading the spec. And I'm like, you know, as you do before you go to bed. As one does. Yeah. As one does. I mean, 802.11 RFCs are fun, so yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I triple E is nodding. But, um, but yeah, so it turns out what they do is, uh, is there's actually this part of the spec that allows a, uh, a third party to become basically like a registrar in the whole scenario. Mm -hmm. So like a Windows computer, like setting like Windows 7 in particular, can actually set up your wireless network using this technology. And it's pretty cool because it becomes the registrar to your network and then it can create keys and it can change the key and things like that. It can actually change your WPA password. Well, he figured out how to become that by brute forcing the WPS key. It's eight numbers, and here's where it gets beautiful. These eight numbers, you don't need to actually generate them in sequence. You, they, uh, they're accepted in four digits and then four digits. Oh, so you just need two pairs of four? Yes, and so... And uh, that's easier than one one. Yeah, eight one eight-digit one would just be astronomical. But the four-digit one, that's only 10,000 attempts. And if you can do an attempt per second, that's actually not that bad. And get this, it gets even better because the second four bits, or the second four digits, yeah. Actually, the, um, the last digit is used for a checksum, so it's always known, so it's really only three digits. Oh, so it's only a why thousand. Why did they even make it like this? I, it's actually... It seems like way too easy. I know. Well, you know, here's the thing. There's, there's not a whole lot of, like, in the spec about how to deal with, like, a brute force attack. Okay. So some routers will just sit there going, no, that's not the key. That's not the key. That's not the key. You got the key, right? Well, the other ones will be like, 
you've just tried like 50 keys. I you're, don't you're think cut you're, off. yeah, you're cut off you're for cut like. Off. So some of them cut you off for a minute, some of them longer. So you know their tool will actually scan the network and say like, oh, this is like a Linksys blah blah blah, and this one's a TrendNet and a Netgear and like all these, and it'll actually tell you like, okay, this one's going to take 10 hours, this one's going to take four hours, this one don't even bother. But it's, that's pretty neat. Yeah, that's some fascinating stuff. Uh, the takeaway from that is. Turn off WPS. Yeah, that's another one. You might want to turn it yeah. off. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So and that one doesn't really impact like enterprises because mm -hmm. they're not using the little push button sync stuff. Nice. What else? Okay, so my friend uh, Mubix, aka Rob Fuller, awesome guy, get this. He launched this project. He's been I've known about this project for like over a year. He's been working on this for forever. He has mapped the IP4 internet, and basically done this thing called a zone transfer of everything. He's put it up on deepmagic.com, and you can go over there right now. And what it allows you to do is search for pointer records. Um, so this is like a DNS search. So you know how DNS is? It's just like the phone book of the internet. It, it converts like the name google.com to the IP address, but it does so much more than that. Mm -hmm. That's only like one record type. I think there's like 250 some odd records. So how did he actually map that? Oh, he got a lot of these uh, virtual private servers up in the cloud. He actually ended up getting one from, I forget the name of the company, but they were like uh, a subsidiary of, or they were like reselling through Rackspace. And so he's got like all of these servers at these different places around the internet, and he's running this custom crafted tool that he does that basically goes up to the server and says, hey, can I have all of your zones and their IP addresses and all the records? And normally they're configured not to do that. They're only, they're, the only reason that there's even the ability for them to do that is so that two of these servers, these name servers, can stay in sync. Well, if they're misconfigured, which a lot of times that happens, he's able to say, hey, can I get all of your, you know, all of the children underneath you, all of the records and everything, and he just collects that data and goes on to the next IP address. So you can probably see a lot of stuff that you're not supposed to see. A lot of stuff you're not supposed can, to can see. Can you show us? Yeah, so here's a tool, and we can search for pointing records. I've searched for PC Anywhere, and um, here's uh, you know, PC Anywhere dot softvest.com and if, if I uh, oh here's here's another good search this one is for Apple oh. and so we've got apple.fc.hp.com that's hmm. over at Hewlett Packard's website like what is that interesting um, another it, could, it could be something interesting or it could be something completely boring right well a lot of fun stuff can be done with just searching the administrative stuff like mm -hmm. if I type in Citrix you know if somebody's running a Citrix server uh, now we can see here's uh, here's one Citrix uh, any of these. I mean, people probably didn't expect anybody to come and find these because right. they're not published. But uh, since he was able to go to every name server and just ask for the information, and they gave it to him, he was able to put it into a database. And this database is huge. Yeah, when you say every name server, do you literally mean every? He name started server? at like. You know, layman's terms, he started at 0.0.0.1 and ended up at 255.255.255.255. So all of the IP yeah, all of them. All, all, all of them. All of them. Search all Why the not? Yeah. All of them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, clean all the records. That's very cool. So what um, else did you see? Well, uh, anyway, he's published that over at deepmagic.com. He only cool. has the first, only have the pointer records, mm -hmm. but at ThoughtCon in April, he's releasing the other 300 and some gigs of it. So it's going to get a lot more exciting. Very interesting. Um, and then the last the last thing that I saw that was really nifty was uh, just some research coming out of uh, Kurt Schaefer and Chris uh, Cuevas, who basically did this talk called Raising the White Flag. And it was, it was fascinating because it's kind of like attacking a new trend in, uh, I guess you would say, antivirus. So some big manufacturers like Bit9, McAfee, and Microsoft have released these tools that allow you to do what's called application whitelist security. So rather than your typical antivirus, which works on heuristics and other signatures saying, oh, that looks like a virus and that looks like a virus, well, they come up with that signature by saying, oh, we found one real one in the wild. Like one guy had to get infected and turn into a zombie before we can come up with an antidote, right? Well, this just says, you know what? Everything is evil. <laughs> you know? And so I just say on my desktop, I trust Chrome, mm -hmm. I trust Notepad, I trust Calculator. Uh, I think I just mentioned a Chromebook there, <laughs> but you, you know what I'm saying? Like, like all of the applications, like I'll use XChat too, and mm -hmm. and anything else. 
that's not on the list. It's like a bouncer. It's like, you're not on the list. You're not coming in, right? But what if something comes through one of those applications? That's actually one of the ways that they were able to crack it. Ah. The application itself, uh, I think this was Bit9 software. The, the way that it worked was, if it saw something malicious, it would pop up this notifier. There was a notify.exe that would pop up and say, hey, we stopped some evil stuff. Aren't we great? Well, it turns out that notify.exe, which was actually part of the application, wasn't checked itself. It's like oh. the bouncer's checking everyone at the door, but it's not checking itself, <laughs> right? And so they were able to, with a little thing called DLL injection, put some code at the end of that mm -hmm. software. And so when it would pop up, it'd be like, hey, we just totally thwarted some bad guys, don't worry. And meanwhile, there's some kids sneaking in the back door. Very interesting. I'll have to make my way to Schmoocon one of these years. It's Sounds good stuff. Cool. What's going on over at Hack5 these days? Ooh, we are. Oh, having, he's got a thing. What's uh -oh. he got? We're having a lot of fun. Uh, come next month. Some little evil box will be available at Hack5, and we'll have more to talk about it then. But this thing is going to totally shake up everything when it comes. You can open it. You can you can pop open the box. I can pop it open. You can pop it open. All right, let's see. Yeah, it's really evil. Actually, I'm going to be talking oh, about this at. Oh, it's uh, evil. Oh yeah, I'm going to be talking about <laughs> this at um, at uh, South by Southwest. Fantastic. Yes. So tune into that because we'll be evil. hacking some noobs. Nice. Yeah. Well, thanks, Darren. Thanks so much. And uh, catch all the latest Hack 5 goodness over at revision3.com slash hack5. There's more Techzilla coming right up. But before we do that, it's time to thank one of our sponsors. Netflix, people. Let you watch shows, TVs, movies instantly on your couch, anywhere in your house. It actually saves you time, saves you money, saves you a lot of hassle. Doesn't matter if you're watching on a, your phone, an iPad, an Android pad, a Mac, an Xbox 360, a Wii, a PS3, a Netflix-enabled HDTV or Blu-ray player. It's so cool. Netflix Unlimited Membership lets you access thousands and thousands of TV episodes and movies as many times as you want, anytime you want. You can cancel anytime. And you know what? Every time you watch a movie, they don't add more to your bill. It's a simple, flat monthly fee. It's great if you got kids. Now, for limited time Texilla fans, we got a free 30-day trial membership for you. Just surf on over to Netflix.com slash Texilla and sign up now. And hey, for everybody in Canada and the UK and Ireland, this code works for you too. Netflix.com slash Do us a favor, check out Netflix today.